Hi, I'm Neil from Board Game Happy and thank you very much for watching my video today. Today it is a review and a how to play of Beer and Bread. This is a two player only game from Scott Almez. It is a, a multi-use card game which takes approximately 30 minutes but at the end of it, you're gonna feel like you've been playing a crunchy Euro. There's a lot of brain burning going on here for a very, very easy to explain game. So watch my how to play and then we'll come back up and I'll tell you what I think. Cheers. So this is beer and bread all set up, ready to go. Starting players given the windmill. Each player is dealt five cards at random from the deck. And then you place all the water out every single turn and then depending on whether it's a fruitful year or a dry year indicated by the green or the red you place out the resources so these are some of the examples of the cards the blue top indicates it's a beer recipe the brownie ready one is a bread recipe each card has three distinct functions so all the cards are multi-use the top third of the card is used for harvesting. The middle part of the card is used for selling recipes. And the bottom part of the card is used for upgrades. So let me show you each part of those cards and how they work. If I was to use this card for harvesting, I would place it down here. I would then take the resources indicated, which would be one water, and one barley, lovely components, I think you'll agree. And then I would place them in my store. So they are now ready to go later on. If on a later turn, I was to play a card which had, for example, two more barley, if I was to place that, I take the two barley that's on this card, but I also get any other barley that's further up this column. So I would get three barley. And that is the basics of how you collect your resources. If there were no resources left to take, I wouldn't be able to take them. If ever I took more resources than I can hold, so my current limit at the moment is nine, I can sort out my resources, so I could get rid of that one and put that one in there, for example. And then I would have to offer these to my opponent. They can't sort any of their resources at this point, but if they have room, they're allowed to take all of the resources that they want. So a nice bit of positive player interaction there. So why are you collecting these resources? Well, you're collecting the resources so that you can turn them in to make recipes. So let's just move some things around here. I could, on my next go, instead of playing uh, another harvest action, I could instead sell a recipe. So this is beer. I would place it on my brewery. And then I would spend the resources required, get them off the game, and then turn this over. That spot is now occupied. I can't make any more beer until I move that across. Uh, I can, of course, still make bread. The upgrade action is really easy and, and very fun. Uh, this game has a very cool upgrade possibilities. So at the bottom of the card, you will see this symbol here, which is uh, similar to this symbol here. So basically, if I want to use this card as an upgrade, I literally just slot it underneath and it's immediately available. So this one now says I have one additional storage. That's excellent. This one here is the, for the harvest action. And whenever I collect any of that resource, I grab an extra one. So if I was going to play that one, I would place it under the slot there and it's ready to go straight away. Another function of doing the upgrade is you also get to clear any cards. For example, if I had these two here, you also get to clear any cards over to the side, which gives you room again to make more beer and bread. I mentioned at the beginning of the game, there are two stages. There's a fruitful, the green, and then there's a red phase, which is the dry phase. These two phases work quite a bit differently to each other. So I'll quickly show you how they work. In the fruitful, you would uh, fill up at the beginning of the, of the turn, all of these fields with the green numbered amount of um, resources. And then if I take a card and play it, I then have to pass the remainder of my cards face down to my opponent. They then take one of their cards and pass the remainder to me. This way, 
it's a drafting style game. So I'm going to continue to build up my hand and so are they. And that happens until you've played all your cards. At the end of that phase, you pick up any cards that you've used for harvesting and they form the start of your next hand for the dry phase. This way you can place cards ready that you know you want to play on the next turn. During the dry phase, the first thing you need to do is make sure all the resources are the correct level. So this has got five, this should only have four, and this should only have four. Then you will pick up any cards you previously paid as a harvest action, and then draw back up to five cards. And the last thing you will do is place cards here in the exchange phase. Now, during this part of the game, you no longer pass cards across to your opponent. Instead, what you can do is you can exchange one of your cards with one of the cards from the exchange. When you do that, you must play that card immediately, either as a harvest, selling, or as an upgrade. So once again, there is no exchange, so it's a very different feeling of round. The other thing that's different as well is any cards that are played during the to, to harvest during the dry phase are removed at the end of the game, put in a discard pile as well as these. And then at the beginning of the next fruitful year, five new cards are dealt to each opponent. In between rounds, you look to see who has the least amount of resources in their storage. The person with the least amount gets the starting player windmill and they become first for the next round. If ever there's a tie between the players, the windmill goes to the person who did not have it last round. The end game scoring is really clever. Let's say, for example, I've managed to sell these four cards. So you would take all of your beer here, which is 12 points, and you would take all of your bread, which is 15. Any bonus points that you've managed to get from uh, upgrades, so for example this one here, at every two beer cards would give you one extra point for beer, so that's now 13 if I had that one underneath there. Then you take the lowest of those two scores, so my final score would be 13. Really clever mechanism, it is used in a lot of other games, Rhino Knizzi games, but uh, I really like it in this one. So that's how you score beer and bread. So that was a pretty in-depth how to play, that's pretty much most of the rules covered. Um, Obviously, use the rulebook yourself if you want to learn how to play the game. But that gives you a really good idea of the flow. Really, really simple. Five cards per turn. Uh, six turns in, to in total, or six rounds in total. So that's 30 actions you're going to have to sell your beer and your bread. Um, and you want to keep those as balanced as possible. There's no point running ahead with a beer, getting five or six beers sold if you've only sold two bread, because that score is going to bring you right back down. And that's one of the reasons why I really like this game. Obviously, it's been done loads of times before. Rainer Knizia is a bit of a specialist at this. But with this game, because your storage is limited and because you're going to be um, passing cards between each other, it takes quite a bit of thought, but in a really good way. You just play one card, pass cards over during the fruitful years, and then you get another card and play, and it's as easy as that. The upgrades are fantastic. You just slot them in. You can really build up a nice little engine really, really quickly, and I really like uh, engine building in games. I also really like the limited storage and the fact that you're having to pass them to your um, opponent. Positive player interaction is fantastic as far as I'm concerned. I really love the fact that there is two distinct phases between the dry years and the, um, uh, the fruitful years. That is a fantastic mechanism that really makes you think each turn, what am I going to do? The art is really nice. It reminds me of the art of a bygone time, maybe um, a Uwe Rosenberg game from a few years ago, but it's really nice. It really fits with the game. On the reverse side of the board, there is a, a much darker, bleaker, um, village but I, you don't use it so I'm not quite sure I think it's just there for aesthetics. Um, the game is only 30 minutes long and when you finish if you don't win you will definitely want to play again. It's one of those games where you would think I could have done better there. I, I should have done better there. So yeah really like that. Uh, slight negatives not many really and um, no solo mode but I could imagine it would be quite hard to incorporate a solo mode into this game so I actually understand why it's not there. One of the major problems is the last few turns of the last round can feel like a bit of an anti-climax if, if you know you're unable to either get any upgrades that will score you extra points or sell any more goods. So your last maybe two slash three last goes can be a little bit wasted. 
but sometimes you can have a really great game where you're doing stuff right up to the end and you just manage to sell one more piece of bread and that just puts you into the winning score. Um, score ranges so far have been between about 18 and 25, 26. The 26 was an amazing game. I don't know how that one happened. Uh, really like this game. I would say that if you like two player games, if you like a bit of brain burning, a bit of crunch, this is a really affordable game with some amazing components and a really great package. I would be happy to recommend this to anybody that likes two player games, multi-use card games. It's, it's, a definite, it's a definite winner for me. The first couple of times I played it, I was like, oh, is there gonna be much variety between games? But you know what? The variety comes in just trying to build that engine as well as you can, trying to get uh, the right resources at the right time, trying to lay the right cards so they come back into hand. Really good, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I give this one um, uh, around about 80 to 85%. Um, but I think with a few more plays, I think this would rise higher and higher and higher. But for now, I'm, just, I'm really happy to put this in the 80 to 85% range. I really like it. I hope you enjoyed it too. Um, if you do get a chance to play this, which I recommend you do, please let me know in the comments. And uh, thank you very much for watching the video. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you again soon. Cheers. Thank you.